بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين <coughs> الحمد لله we thank Allah subhanahu wa taala for allowing us inshallah to discuss this topic again you know this is something that I'm seeing on a day to day basis and something that is very much you know important to understand that a lot of people well everyone most people have got issues that they are suffering with they've been struggling with you know for a long long time so inshallah let's just wait <clears throat> while uh, people come on in and um, so what we want to discuss today is why people don't heal why is it that they don't heal what takes that time why is it that you know despite whatever that they're doing they still remain in that in that same sort of lurch now what is very important to understand is how emotions actually affect our health okay emotions affect our health a lot we know that we suffer from physical pain everywhere you go <clears throat> whether it's up and down your street within your own households within your um, you know circle of friends or extended families you will always find someone with a lot of pain now just today i had a client that came to see me um, and she's tried uh, acupuncture she's tried hijama she's tried lots of different things but a lot of pain, you know, debilitating pain for the last few weeks. And despite all the treatment and pain management clinics and all the rest of it came and, you know, uh, tried to do some Afia healing with her. Um, what became very clear within the first 15, 20 minutes is that the pain, although it was physical, was rooted emotionally. So the pain was rooted emotionally. And once we began to start working on the emotions, that's when the pain started to actually release the shoulder and the trapped nerves and everything that was stuck in her system began to release um, the underlying emotion, anger. Okay, now everyone can relate to this. Everyone has got anger issues. I've got anger problems. Every, you know, everyone we know to an extent has got anger problems. There are some people whose anger problems does cost them so much more. Okay, it costs them relationships. It costs them their jobs, whatever it may be. But anger is a root problem. This is why the hadith, you know, the Prophet وسلم, again and again reminding us um, that, you know, you need to take care of your anger. You need to deal with your anger. You need to be able to um, control your anger. Anger is not something that you drink. Anger is a poison you drink hoping the other person dies. But usually they don't. And this is what is so important. So people, please, inshallah, just share this video while you're coming on. Just share the video so that other people can benefit from as well. And what is important is that we need to take hold of we need to have a grip over our anger once that anger kicks in then it begins to start wearing the body down it starts to work on on the whole subconscious and on the physical level causing our body and our immune system to weaken once the immune system starts weakening because of the excess of emotions in our body that's where we start to uh, see manifestation of physical symptoms so in this case it was down the arm, in the shoulder, the neck, right down into the fist. And so that whole part of her body, subhanAllah, was in debilitating pain. And as we work through the emotion, not even the physical pain, not touching the physical pain, but let's just talk about emotions. How does this make you feel? How does that person make you feel? Who are the people that cause you the stabbing pain in your life? And subhanAllah, the pain started abating. The pain started just going down and easing off. And literally felt lighter and lighter and lighter and this is what the what the issue is is that a lot of the times our bodies do not heal because we are looking for solutions in the wrong places and also the thing is that whenever we are looking for solutions we will always look for solutions that suit our temperament that suits our nafs rather than um, you know going straight into the root cause that is the cause of our problems and really the reason why we have emotional issues is because of ourselves okay it's not because of other people other people may be the contributory factors towards that but the way we receive that emotion the way we receive and perceive that threat the way we perceive that person's actions upon us and the possible outcomes in our life this is how we respond this is what we go into a um, self-defense mechanism our body wants to survive our body starts to bring up all these emotions and uh, the adrenaline kicks in okay so all the energy is taken away from our body and put into our into our extremities into our limbs for movement and for fighting and possibly pushing it up into the brain so 
a lot of the times our lungs are not breathing effectively, our food is not digesting effectively, and as a result, we're not uh, removing that toxic uh, waste out of our body. Okay, and this is what builds up. This is what's leading to IBS. And so, along with dealing uh, with the correct issues, we need to understand how we're going to find those issues. And a lot of the times when we want to heal, the person that we really have to contend with and deal with is not the perpetrator but ourselves okay because we hold on to that emotion we keep replaying the scene years and decades after that person has left our lives in some unfortunate cases we you know a lot of my clients and you know i'm sure this uh, goes for you as well is that you're probably living with that person on a day-to-day -day basis and you can't get away from them and because you can't get away from them you know those triggers continue to manifest themselves but subhanallah you know if you watch one of my previous videos on narcissism um, and you know living with difficult characters this is where you find out that a lot of the times you are in that position that you have unfortunately become stuck in and one of the only ways to get out of that situation or to release yourself of that is to move away to separate to step away because when you are overwhelmed with emotion your brain becomes fogged your whole you know demeanor and your whole iman and everything starts to become compromised and so this is very important uh, to understand another reason why people don't heal is that they want to heal on their terms they don't want to heal according to their body's terms so they might have been ill for 20 years or 25 years or six months or six years but now they go to see the therapist once and they want to heal in that moment and subhanallah it doesn't work like this okay just because and this is a problem in our in our culture in our, in the indian subcontinent type of culture um the islamic culture generally because we read so many books of people that have gone to pious people they've said and prayed something for them and suddenly the the problem has vanished and this if you look at those books now subhanallah you can imagine how many hundreds or thousands of people visit the pious on a daily basis they will go there and ask for dua how many of those people actually got healed out of a thousand people that visit this pious person every day how many got healed who is actually doing the healing is it the person that pious person he's healing people or is it his dua by which allah is healing and even when duas are made allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the healer allah is the one that bestows the healing upon uh, the people and so the stories that we read in the books of the pious predecessors may allah bless them raise them and increase them and may Allah keep us under their shade and in their, in their uh, you know, through their fuyus and barakat, may we be raised. But also what is important to understand is that the stories that we read in their books and in their biographies are the one in a thousand people that came to them and a miracle manifested at that time. And that one person came into the book because if every person that came to them and every person healed, then we would have volumes and volumes and volumes uh, pertaining to just one scholar on a monthly basis okay and we don't have that what we have is we have 20 30 40 um, of those uh, you know incidents um, that are reported you know and attributed to the sheikh that these 20 people got healed in such and such a way and so we need to understand is that we are not of those one in a thousand people consider yourself to be out of the 999 that you have to go through a physical process even the people that heal um, miraculously okay when you look at their uh, past as well they've been searching for healing for maybe 15 years 20 years 30 years and after doing all of that they reached that point when they were ready the healing was ready for the body to absorb and to take on and that happened at that time so we have to really change our mentality we need to understand just in the same way as we go to the doctor the doctor says here are your tablets you need to take these for the next two weeks three times a day this is a healing process the body is going to take some time to release those emotions to release yourself and then inshallah from that what's going to happen is that we need to be able to detach ourselves so a lot of people come to me and they go to a lot of our therapists and generally across the board people who go to therapists have one session okay they'll feel a mild shift or a mild you know sort of um, you know a release of some form and then they'll sort of fall back into that old pattern again because what you need to understand the body has lived in that state in that vibration for a very long time it's become used to it and because it is used to it 
what the body does is that naturally it inclines back towards um, the way it's always lived. So what we need is session after session. We need a lot of sessions. It's like going to the gym, lifting some weights today and saying, well, where is it gone? Well, you know, why am I still not built up? No, it will not grow in a day. And so the same thing within our health is that because your body has been ill or diseased or ailments or whatever it is for decades or a decade or a year or six months, it will not heal overnight. You need to be persistent. You need to be consistent. And especially if the therapist has requested that you follow uh, some, you know, some routine, um, they might give you some homework to do. They might ask you, you know, to do some breathing exercises, to do some meditation. Then you need to be able to follow that. So many of my clients, you know, we, we work with them. We, you know, take them through the process. And then we give them homework, go home and do ABC. The next time they come back, and Alhamdulillah, they come back. Um, did you do your homework? No, I got a bit busy. Okay, priorities. Okay, again, the priorities are an issue. So we do a second session, go home and please do your homework. They come back for the third time. Usually by that time, they still haven't done their homework. At that point in time, I am switched off from this client. Okay, because if they are not committed to their healing, then I am wasting my time. Okay, forget their money and all the rest of it, but I am wasting my time because this person has not taken upon themselves to get better. And this is what is so important. So if you do have any questions, please feel free to ask with regards to this topic, why we do not heal, okay, pertaining to emotions. Another thing with regards to emotions as well, like we said, is that the emotions will manifest themselves deep within the body. And also what we tend to do is we become habitual. So every time we are contemplating our issues and contemplating our, our you know, trauma of the past, we are effectively firing off certain parts of our brain that link up into a routine. And when that routine is linked up, then consistently and persistently our brain will keep firing that off um, so that we keep being drawn back to that memory, drawn back to that memory. And that's what we need to be so careful of people, so careful. And the best way to deal with that is to start grounding yourself, bringing yourself back into your being, becoming present. The quickest way of becoming present is just imagine or just sit there, take a few deep breaths and take your attention to the soles of your feet. Okay, take the attention to the soles of your feet. Can I feel my toes? Okay, what does it feel like? I feel a tingly sensation. Can I feel my ankles? Okay, where's my heel? I'm resting on it on the side. Okay, alhamdulillah. And that in itself has cut me off from my whole thought process. Everything has gone. And now I'm in this position where I am grounded and rooted within myself. So alhamdulillah. And this is what we need to understand. Um, okay, alhamdulillah. And we'll, okay, we'll come to those uh, answers and questions in a bit, inshallah. Okay, why else do we not heal? Okay, why else do we not heal is because we have our own perceptions. We have our own, um, the client feels that they know how their body should heal. Okay, so it's like going to the doctor and the doctor saying, well, take this medication. And you say to the doctor, well, I think I really should be taking that medication. Okay, so it's according to the client's terms and not towards the therapist's terms. And in this case, subhanAllah, what tends to happen is that we need to be able to um, submit ourselves. We need to put down our egos. And a lot of the times, you know, when we get people um, who think they can heal themselves or they've read up so much on this work. I have psychologists, psycho psychiatrists and psychotherapists, you know, attending my workshops um, and still sort of, you know, having that uh, really like, you know, how is this happening, you know? But the, the people that come and they submit and they say, yeah, Alhamdulillah, these things work quite easily and effectively. They are the ones that will pick up the most benefit. And so I think one of the questions that has come through is how come the cost uh, for Afia and Hijama healing are so costly? Yet the Sheikh only recites Quranic Ayat. OK, good. Um, a lot of the times what people don't realize is that just because I have a beard or I wear a thawb or whatever it is, it does not make me a Sheikh. OK, I am not an Alim. I'm not a Sheikh. I am someone who has just, you know, studied little bits of uh, the deen and, you know, the basics um, and spent some time, you know, with with uh, our our mashayikh and whatnot. And that's fine. But my uh, job is a profession. I am a professional. I am a therapist. I spent money and time uh, actually studying 
to become you know who I am and now it is my expertise and I give myself quite freely like this lives and all the rest of these uh, sessions of information are always free okay but when it comes to my time and when people come to me because if they go to the doctor and the doctor will say this is how much is going to cost the pharmacist will say this is how much your medicines are going to cost you don't ask them why them being Muslim or not Muslim but why they're charging so much they charge what they charge and so what we have to look at is that people who become therapists have invested a lot of time they've invested a lot of their money they've invested a lot of time away from their families and now we need to be able to pay our bills as well if if my bills were not being covered and paid for then I would have to go and look for another job if I am to go and look for another job then I cannot dedicate my time uh, to actually working with people on a one-to-one -one basis and helping them through so it is very important to understand and to appreciate and to acknowledge that we as therapists we are not ulama we are not mashayikh and even the ulama need to get paid the ulama even to teach quran they must be paid because we have ulama that are poor unfortunately ulama that cannot make ends meet ulama that they cannot pay bills why these are the people that are teaching us our deen and are taking us towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if we cannot appreciate that fact that these people are our saviors for the hereafter then we have serious problems within so again this is another culture that has come up in our in our minds of reading about pious predecessors that these people um, never charge alhamdulillah they shouldn't charge because they have other means by which they earn their living and usually the mashayikh alhamdulillah they are people of zuhud so they can do you know with uh, as little as possible but unfortunately in this day and age we see that these mashayikh who don't take from us yet they are driving around in big big cars and living in the flashiest of houses they might not ask for money but people will go and just give them and give them and give them okay and a lot of these people through through their own standing and through their own charities earn millions of your money okay people throw millions at them and they have enough to look after themselves to build enough properties and to you know go through for the next three generations are looked after so a lot of the times you know when when we as therapists are looked at and say why do you charge we charge because we are professionals we are not um we, you know no one else is coming and paying our bills if someone would covered my bills and my holidays and everything else then maybe I would give some time, uh, you know, out completely. But mashallah, I think a lot of people are getting a lot of my time for free anyway. So if you have any questions related to this, then inshallah, feel free to ask. And I hope that answers it. But inshallah, like I said, um, yeah, alhamdulillah. And yeah, so again, you know, the Shaykh will recite Quran and, and that's good. You know, if, if someone has been given ijazah of particular ayat of the Quran, and they can recite it and healing happens alhamdulillah you know we accept the healing of that as well but also at the same time we have people who don't go to ulama and and they don't you know they might not be muslim but they go to their buddhist uh, you know uh, priests and they'll go to the temples or to the vicars or whatever and they will pray for them something or make you know dua for them in their own way and people still get better so there is a methodology behind it there is a science behind getting better you know, Yunani Tib, the Tib of the Prophet ﷺ is called Yunani. Why? Because a lot of those practices and principles were taken from the Greek uh, philosophy and teaching. Okay, so a lot of that balancing of the temperaments and all the rest of it is taken, you know, within that. And, and the understanding that the Prophet ﷺ then, you know, clarified for us further. But again, it's a mixture of all different uh, forms. So what that shows you is that healing is not just for Muslims. It's for everybody. It's for human beings okay and wherever you go you need to understand that our bodies are able to heal what is lacking is the knowledge of how the body will heal and once you begin to understand the knowledge of how our body can heal that is when we can actually start making those shifts so inshallah starting next monday okay not tomorrow but next monday the 15th and the 18th the 22nd and the 25th of july i'm running my emotional deep trauma healing webinar people with aches and pains, issues, you know, deep-rooted issues, please, inshallah, please, 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 um, I request that you, you know, make an effort to join us, okay? Make an effort to join us because when you join us and are able to learn the principles behind which your healing takes place, a lot of your issues will start to, um, you know, just wear away. And this is what is important. We need to understand how healing happens. We need to understand. And the steps are very simple. I need you to invest some time 
to learn more about yourself, to learn where those emotions are stuck, to, to learn why you are in the way you are. Why is it you've got diabetes? Why is it that you've got breathing difficulties? Why is it that your neck is always stiff or your head is always hurting? Or, you know, you, you are lethargic or you've got fibromyalgia. All of these things are pointing to the fact that there is an emotional trauma stuck in your system. And so if you want to get rid of that trauma, then please, inshallah, join me um, on these uh, on this uh, series of the webinar four sessions okay just four sessions and each session will be about an hour to an hour and a half long i will give you the theory and i will give you the practice you will have time for homework and then theory practice again and you'll have time for homework and these sessions will be recorded the sessions will be recorded so you know at any point in time you can come back to them and and visit them again okay keep doing the homework keep doing the homework because this is what is important is that Healing is not a one-off magic pill, okay? It's not that I give you some sort of uh, M&Ms and you, you swallow it and every all your problems have disappeared. No, this is, you know, it's just like food that you need to have your meal, okay? If you're, if you're eating twice a day, then you have to eat twice a day. Just because you ate six meals today does not mean that you'll be exempt for the next three days. No, it doesn't work like that because your body processes those uh, the food and then it lets out what it doesn't want and then it needs more. So in the same way, our healing works over a period of time. And just because one emotion might have been sorted out, guess what? You've got so many more problems waiting for you already. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to understand how these emotions get rooted within our system. And may Allah give us the tawfiq, inshallah, to take that step uh, so that you can actually face that one person who is causing you all those problems. And that one person, I tell you now, is yourself okay the reason why you are ill is because of yourself and if you are ready to take on yourself if you are ready to challenge yourself if you are ready to really look deep within yourself to find where those emotions are buried then please inshallah come and uh, register for this workshop we will start next monday inshallah at 8 p.m uk time and then on thursday and then monday and then thursday and then inshallah in between i'll be supporting our group of participants and alhamdulillah we already have a nice a solid uh, group uh, together um but inshallah after this live i'll be um, posting up the poster for you as well so please inshallah for those that are interested uh, just revisit this video share the video and then after that um let's you know get in touch let's talk about it because a lot of people are suffering with pain unnecessarily a lot of people are suffering with pain unnecessarily so don't be part of that statistic we have a solution we have a very easy step-by-step -step methodology and i'm inviting you inshallah to partake to detach yourself from the shackles of shaitan and the nafs and aches and pains and to free yourself and just revitalize your body revitalize your immune system revitalize your mind okay reconnect to allah and let go of all of those things that serve no purpose in your life may allah make it easy for me for you May Allah grant you a blessed week, a blessed sleep, inshallah, tonight. And may Allah grant us closeness to him and his beloved Nabi, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.